Guys, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. We're gonna do 10 random tractor questions today, accumulated from the last two days worth of uh, questions that I've been asked, okay? So I am asked so many questions all day, every day. I try to get back to as many folks as I possibly can. I literally am just inundated with questions constantly. So if I haven't got back to you, you know, I swear I'm trying to as quick as I can. But these are great questions that are getting asked. And so I think it's a really good format here to be able to share that with everybody out there who may have thought about it, who may have never thought about it, who may have done it before or have some other valuable input. So after you get done watching this, make sure you leave your own comment below about these different random tractor questions. You know, it gives a lot of perspective when more than one person gives a response, right? So don't just take my word for it, give your own take on it as well and we'll make everybody a little bit smarter. Hey, so I hope you stick around. If you haven't done so yet, consider hitting that subscribe button right underneath the video. Make sure you read through the description as well. A lot of helpful links down there. Check out the other videos on my channel and here we go. Okay, so first question here. I actually was asked this in a couple different um, related formats of it over the last couple of days. So basically, is there a way to either increase or decrease, you know, either ground clearance of your tractor or the overall height of your tractor, okay? And so, um, with some models out there, there are going to be different tire options that you can put on your machine uh, from the factory, you know, so whether it's, a, you know, maybe an inch taller or an inch shorter, you have a little bit of play there. You know, that comes into consideration um, when you're trying to shrink the height, for instance, and you're trying to get underneath a doorway, you know, so this came up on the B2650 cab tractor that I had for sale. It was in a recent video where it just won't fit underneath a standard seven foot, you know, nominal garage door. It's just two or three inches too tall. Why would they design them that way and not just find a way to fit underneath? You know, you're so close, you know, come on, let's just knock that thing out of the park and make it fit underneath that standard uh, seven foot door. Now on the opposite side of that, I had someone who was really interested in trying to increase the ground clearance underneath, I think it was a 2038R. Uh, maybe that one right back there, if you can see it. And so what are the options, right? So can you add larger tires to get more clearance underneath there? Can you uh, maybe remove a drawbar and still have enough protection underneath the transaxle housing? You know, does the drawbar actually provide some sort of protection to the transaxle housing? These are all questions that I'm asked. I'm, I'm, I'm just repeating them right there. So a lot of these tractors, you're gonna hear, you know, kind of stuff about it on forums and, and hear saying all that. I don't really know um, I have not been able to really validate this with any kind of an, an engineer, but it makes sense that tires, you know, are designed with the machine to, you know, turn at the same, at the same rate, okay? And so if you were to change tire sizes or um, put, you know, larger tires on the back and keep the fronts the same, is there a chance that you could have some issues with the, the timing and everything that's set up in the machine? Perhaps, I don't really know that answer, but maybe some of you do, so leave a comment below. Are there any other ways to increase or lower overall height or ground clearance on a machine? Love to hear what you think. Another very common question that I'm asked is gonna be, what type of fluids and filters do you use in your tractors? And I think you guys might have very strong opinions about this. You know, I guess I don't really have a strong opinion, but I think I have a pretty simple answer for it myself, which is, you know, I don't think that you really unless you're in a very heavy duty application where you are constantly um, changing fluids and filters. You know, most of us in the subcompact and compact tractor world are gonna do these oil changes, you know, once a year, once every couple of years maybe, depending on how we're using them. And the cost really isn't that big of a consideration, you know? So I always say just use the OEM uh, fluids and filters, okay? That's what they're gonna be designed with and, and, and built with. And to save a few bucks to use something different, I get it, there's some very good uh, products out there that are not going to be the OEM. I, I totally get it. I know what you guys are saying. I know there's been tests and all this and, and, and the other thing out there. So for me, I just use the OEMs because I feel like you're not doing it that often. So to pay a few extra bucks to just have that done, have that reassurance there, you know, it's one less thing for any manufacturer to ever say, hey, you didn't use something on the approved list. It just takes that out of the equation and makes it a little bit simpler that way. Next question was about using a mid-mount mower deck with a dual wheel adapter kit or even wheel spacers, okay? And so uh, the short answer is it can be done, but it's gonna require modification to your mower deck. So the mower decks that go underneath the mid-mount mowers here, I don't have one on here because it won't fit. The problem is those rear gauge wheels that stick out off the back, they're gonna interfere, okay? Typically, they're gonna come just outside of this, this single tire that's right here and when you put duals on here, just like what you have right now, it's just gonna have that interference. I am curious, once I get around to getting these, uh, this updated spacer kit on there, it's actually going to widen the gap a little bit. 
I don't think it's going to be enough to really make a difference and allow the, the gauge wheel to fit in between there, especially considering um, there's a difference in the 54 and the 60 inch mower decks as well. So I want to put that out there. It was a great question that was asked, but most likely, and I've seen folks do this before, just cut those rear gauge wheels off or relocate them to a different uh, spot on the mower deck, but something to definitely keep in mind. There's you know, unfortunately, there can be a trade-off between that stability that you want to look for and some of the functionality, like on a mower deck. However, if you're looking to get increased stability, that side-to-side -side lateral stability, man, I love these dual-wheel adapter kits. You can get them. There's a link on my website where you can purchase them um, right from Miller Tire, but going through the link on my website gets you right to where you need to be. You get 5% off a discount code GWT. Okay, so next question, can I use a snow pusher as a snow bucket as well? So can I, can I also scoop up the snow and then move it to where I want? Well, the short answer is no, because this right down here, what you can see right down here is the bottom edge. There's no bottom to a snow pusher, and that's kind of the beauty of it and what sets it apart from a bucket. Because if you've ever tried to move snow with a bucket, you'll find that so much of it traps inside the bucket and doesn't release. It's just you have to rock the bucket back and forth to shake it out and then reset and do your whole thing. All. It's a super inefficient process. You know, I, I've done videos on it before. I'm sure I'll do more videos, but bucket for snow removal, it can be done, but it's, um, it's bad for a lot of reasons. So snow pushers are inherently designed to push that snow where you want and then release it you know, leave it there. So you're not gonna be able to scoop with a snow pusher. It's just really not the intent of the, the piece of equipment. However, if you're watching, I'll give you a little bit of advanced notice. I am doing a video really soon here. You know, you're gonna have that preseason sale, get 5% off. Uh, you gotta get your order in now for delivery later in the fall, but get that 5% uh, off now if you place your order with a deposit. Get a hold of me, but there'll be a whole other video coming out soon about that. Hey, really quick here, guys. This is Lube Shuttle, okay? It is a revolution in greasing system. Takes all the pain and frustration out of it. I'm serious. I've done videos just on it, but literally, no plunger to pull back, no air gaps, no leaking grease, no wasted grease, no wasted time, no mess. These cartridges here just screw in and screw out, okay? Right here, screws in and screws out. It's super easy. I'll post the link to the video so you can check them out. 5% off with discount code GWT. I'd like to buy a hydraulic top link or a side link. Can you sell me one? Well, I don't sell those, unfortunately. I do think they're awesome. I've done a lot of videos on hydraulics. I'll try to post a link above so you can see what I'm talking about. But what a hydraulic top link is or a side link, it's basically going to replace like this manual, you know, standard top link right here with a hydraulic uh, cylinder so that if you have an additional function, you can hook up some hydraulic hoses to it. You gotta have outlets like this. This is one SCV, okay? So flow can go either way, but you could hook up hoses right to it here and then this will just, with a with the push of a button or a push of a lever, it'll extend out or retract as needed. Same thing with the side link here. You can get those, those top links, those side links, who I recommend are fit right hydraulics, although they do have a decent lead time, but he's really, really good at his craft, okay? He's gonna design this thing exactly to fit your tractor. You can get some off the shelf and make them work at uh, different stores or different online websites. I'm, I'm not saying you can't, but, you know, to get an expert's advice like that too, it can be worth the wait. So fit right hydraulics, look them up. So this was an interesting question that uh, I got yesterday, which was, you know, trying to determine the right size of a brush hog for a tractor. And so um, I think it was a 3046R this customer was looking at, which had 36 horsepower, you know, it was rated for at the PTO and a five foot brush hog maybe took 25 um, minimum PTO horsepower and the six foot took 30. Okay. so. So both of those brush hogs were underneath the um, max PTO rating for the 3046R, okay? So 36 horsepower is what it's rated for. One was 25, one was 30 for the different brush hogs that they required, okay? So the question was, is using something that's very close to the, um, the maximum PTO horsepower, so using that 30 minimum of 30 horsepower required six foot brush hog on a tractor that has 36 PTO horsepower, is that going to shorten the lifespan of the tractor? So the answer I gave to the customer was, you know, if these engineers are designing it so that you can't use an attachment with the tractor that's within the design parameters, if doing so is going to shorten, you know, significantly the lifespan of the machine, then I think that's a pretty screwed up design. So, you know, my take on it would be, and I would argue this with anybody is, you know, an engineer better be designing something to perform as intended within those design parameters. 
But to use something with into the design parameters, even if it is close to that top end, that top threshold of what it can handle, I really think that would be a disservice to all of us tractor owners, the entire tractor market, if it was going to significantly impact the longevity of the tractor. Okay, next question here is a pretty interesting one, and I don't think I'm really even qualified to give this kind of an opinion, but I was asked it anyways, which is, how should you design a barn, a shed, a garage, the layout to store your tractor and all of your attachments? Well, that is going to have a lot of answers to it, okay? There's a lot of moving parts there depending on your budget, uh, restrictions, the attachments that you have, what you plan to have, you know, um, just different, different parameters there. And so, you know, you'll see a lot of videos online. I think Tractor Time with Tim has all sorts of stuff showing how he kind of lays out the inside. And so to kind of get some um, general ideas of good ways to lay things out, Tractor Time with Tim would be a good one to watch. If you look at his pole, bar, pole barn build uh, series, he's done a lot of things there, just kind of how he re uh, lays out and revamps that, that pole barn at his new place. And even at his old place there, he had some good layouts there with racking and everything else. And, and he can get dollies, storage carts, you know, all sorts of kinds of things. And, and Tim's not the only one, but he's got a lot of videos on that topic. But that's a very good question. And what I like about it the most is the fact that that guy was trying to keep everything stored inside under cover, you know, and not keeping everything stored outside where it's going to be out in the elements and in the weather. So he's thinking ahead. Okay, so next question up here regarding quick hitch and heavy hitch compatibility. So obviously these are going to work in unison just fine here. So the particular heavy hitch weight bracket we're looking at is going to be the double offset here. And so this is something I'd never even considered before. It hadn't even crossed my mind. So it was a really good question. But you can see the cross bracing here on the quick hitches. It's a, you know, a common design. These are the Speedcos that I sell. You can get them in um, red right now. Okay. This is black. Might have black in the future, but the ones that I have right now are red. Great uh, setup here. You'll see no bushings required. Okay. That's the, the big selling point of these quick hitches here is that all the other quick hitches out there require that expensive $40 ish, you know, uh, a set, um, set of bushings for every attachment you want to put in a quick hitch. You avoid that with this quick hitch, but back to the question, heavy hitch, quick hitch compatibility. You know, you, you can't get four weights right in this little section here. You can only get three due to this little extra cross bracing that comes into play. On top of that fact, I'd actually never even tried to put on the weights back here with the heavy hitch on the, uh, the dual weight bracket, the offset weight bracket. It is very hard to get these suitcase weights on this backside right here. You know, it's, it's doable, but it is not fun. You may even really need to uh, get these weights on this, on this back bracket right here and then connect it to the heavy hitch somehow. That could be a lot easier. Out here, obviously, it's no problem at all, but this is a, a challenging concept right there to get uh, the weights on with, with a quick hitch on it as well. However, heavy hitch makes some really good stuff. You don't have to get the offset. You can get different kinds of, or different styles of their weight brackets as well. You can put the 42 pounders, you can put the 70 pounders on here too. Get a lot of great ballast weight uh, for you. You get 5% off with discount code GWT, okay? So if you're interested, 5% off discount code GWT at heavy hitch. Another question I'm asked on probably almost a daily basis, not just in the last day or two, is do you have whatever model loader it is to fit my tractor? I'm looking for a used loader to fit it. So a couple of the popular ones are gonna be the 45 loader for the X7 series garden tractors, or like an H120 loader for the one series, but I get asked about all the models. And you know, I'm telling you, this is why I stress to folks all the time, you know, don't buy a tractor thinking it's a really good deal and that you're just gonna pick up a used loader down there, you know, down the road and then just have everything you need and save a good buck. It's very, very, very hard to find those used loaders in the market. And, you know, typically because of that scarcity, the prices are going to be higher as well, you know. So I would encourage you, if you want a loader for your tractor, get one with it. You know, the X7 series garden tractor, that's a whole other story right there in and of itself because those loaders are no longer made, you know, and so there's just fewer and fewer of them that are out there in good condition and that are being sold. But if you want a loader on your tractor, don't try to save a buck you know, getting one without a loader and think you're going to add one on because oftentimes that can be a very, very frustrating process to go through. Last question for today is going to be, what's my opinion on X brand tractor? You know, whether it's Korean built tractors or if it's Branson or if it's LS or whoever it is, you know, 
you know, kind of my general thing in life is, yeah, that you can always find a needle in a haystack, you know, something that is uh, really cheap and just lasts forever, you know, maybe you get lucky, maybe it's just the way that you use it, who knows what it is. And this doesn't mean it's tractors, it could be vehicles, it could be guns, it could be anything that you're looking to buy, right? But you get what you pay for, in my opinion, you know, there's, there's a reason things are at different price points. And sure, some of it is going to be brand recognition, you know, because manufacturers could and probably should just charge what the market will bear right so but that's kind of my general opinion is uh it's just that you know so i mean everybody's got their own priority list you know and and budget can be at a very high point on a lot of people's priority list so that's going to determine the factors and uh i'm not looking to dissuade anybody from buying one thing or the other i sell what i sell it works for me and everybody has a tractor that works for them well, hopefully you enjoyed these 10 random questions here. Maybe we'll do another episode of this down the road as well. I can probably accumulate 10 more random ones here pretty quickly too. If you haven't done so yet, consider hitting that subscribe button underneath the video here. Also read through the description as well. Check out the other videos on the channel. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.